I ran for Congress and I won. Well, at the time I, I didn't have a family, I promised to myself to leave them a better country than the one that I inherited. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, I cannot in good conscience say that I have done that. That is uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who was of course transitioning out of Congress as a result of him turning against Donald Trump and thereby effectively being booted from the party. Uh, he was criticizing himself in that clip, but as he goes into, he has quite a bit of criticism for the Republican Party's direction as well. Watch this. Where Republicans once believed that limited government meant lower taxes and more autonomy, today limited government means inciting violence against government officials. Following the tragic Oklahoma City bombing, former President George H.W. Bush publicly refuted those who used fear to gain support. In stark contrast, our leaders today belittle and in some cases justify attacks on the U.S. Capitol as, quote, legitimate political discourse. The once great party of Lincoln, Roosevelt, and Reagan has turned its back on the ideals of liberty and self-governance. Instead, it has embraced lies and deceit. The Republican Party used to believe in a big tent, which welcomed the tired, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Now, we shelter the ignorant, the racist, who only stoke anger and hatred to those who are different than us. That was uh, pretty brutal. He's gonna have more to say about Donald Trump in just a second, but what did you make of that? Yeah, I loved it uh, and I wanna give him credit. So look, uh, you don't have to agree with everything a, a guy does and I don't agree with Adam Kinsinger's policies and don't lose track of that because he'll be an MSNBC host soon. Uh, okay, <laughs> remember uh, he wanted to repeal the Affordable Care Act and loves tax cuts for the rich, etc. Now having said that, he knew that there was an excellent chance that he was going to lose in a primary, that's why he resigned. And, and he, uh, so he's basically ending his political career to stand up for democracy and against Donald Trump. And you have to give him a world of credit for that. It's when you see the courage, doesn't matter where it comes from, you should reward it and you should uh, applaud it. So it, and it, it was courageous of him to say the things that he said earlier. Uh, and it is courageous of him to say what he said now. Now there is one thing wrong that he said. Um, he's, he talks about the party of Lincoln and etc. And it's deeply misleading yeah. because Trump didn't start all this hatred within the Republican Party and the racism etc. that Adam Kinzinger is talking about. So when he says, "Oh, uh, there's gambling in this establishment," you know, there's it's a little fake concern because uh, in reality the party switched. Uh, in the 1960s. The Democrats used to have the Dixiecrats who were racist in the South, who did not like that the Republican Party freed the slaves in their opinion, right? But after Lyndon Johnson and Democrat got the Civil Rights Act and Voting Rights Act passed, Richard Nixon, a Republican decided to do the Southern strategy. And that was a strategy to get very specifically and very literally racist voters in the South to switch over and vote for Republicans. And they did, and mission accomplished, and that led to a lot of victories, right? But to pretend that this was has been the party of Lincoln since the since the 1960s is total BS. That's not remotely true. Republicans have been the racist party since the 60s. That is indisputable. It is Trump did not start that. He just added fuel to an, to a bonfire. That's right. We didn't start the fire. We pour a whole bunch of gasoline on it. No, and, and walking people back down that memory lane, Jink, is very important because in that point that he was making, he did what neoliberals do, which is to blame all of the wrongs in this country on Donald J. Trump. He just brought the stuff back up to the surface that was already beneath, you know, uh, hovering beneath. And then the point that he made about, you know, being the party of the racists and the people who wanted to just overthrow government. I mean, we just Marjorie Taylor Green, the congresswoman, just did a speech for young Republicans, yep. you know, a, a few days ago or a couple of weeks ago, saying to them that if her and Steve Bannon were in charge of January 6th, they would have been locked and loaded. And they wouldn't have lost. So the point that he was making there about this this turn within the party, albeit blaming it all on Trump, is not right. But this this deep seated turn that they are uh, partying hardy about this turn, a lot of them 
was definitely spot on. And, mm -hmm. and you're right, I give him a lot of credit for giving the type of speech that he gave, because he could have just left quietly, but he put it all out there on the line, and he might not do anything like this ever again, yeah, that's but he true. did it. Yeah, and there, guys, extra level of courage is he's, he didn't just say that Trump was racist. Mm -hmm. He said that the, the Republican party, Republican yeah, party he is racist. He did. Yeah. And let me add another point. I mean, he's right about the Republican Party, but let me not let the Democrats off the hook. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad, you know, my, I have a brother that's conservative. He reminds me all the time of the Dixie Carrot. I get it. But even right now in this moment, you know, some the Republican Party does it more overtly. And the Democratic Party does it in a more covert way. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember when when Mr. Biden was a candidate and he said the Charlemagne the God that if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Like if Trump had a directly said something like that, people would be running in the streets, you know, tearing their clothes off and saying, you know, this is this is outrageous. But because Biden did it, it was okay. Uh, Biden is the same president who, when he was in the Congress, did not want black children to go to school with white children. He said he wants to send his kids to a jungle. So let's not get it twisted. In very modern history, yeah. we see both covert and overt displays of racism, of anti-blackness, of xenophobia, Islam, I mean, you name it. So it's not just that one side is necessarily better than the other, it's just that one side puts it all out there in the open. It's the difference between the fox and the wolf. Yeah, yeah. and so let me uh, just double down on that. Because look, Biden's done a lot of outrageous things, including uh, you know, saying- The grand he, bargain? Yeah, the grand bargain he wanted where he was gonna, they were gonna cut social security, et cetera, that was under Obama and Biden. Yeah. But specifically uh, when it comes to uh, these types of issues. First of all, he pretended they have gotten arrested with Nelson Mandela. Oh my God. That was just yes. a horrific lie. Right? Yes. The crime so, bill, sorry for jumping in on you, Jenk. I mean, we can lay Yeah, lay and remember to, to your point, Nina, though, like the Dixiecrats were still around in the 1970s when That's Biden exactly right. was rising up and That's in right. the 80s. Remember Robert Byrd yes. uh, was, uh, uh, was in the Klan and he was a Democrat from West Virginia. And so the parties were transitioning at that point. Biden came into power as a senator, as a young guy, um, just as they were transitioning. So some of his stuff was mm -hmm. policies were left over from the old Democrats against busing, etc. Mm -hmm. right? And some were from the new Democrats. Now, he, Biden also did plenty of positive things in his career about it related to African Americans and other things. But as we stand here today, also uh, didn't lift a finger to get Voting Rights Act passed. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we have a new voting rights issue, That's just right. like we did in the civil rights uh, era, where uh, people's voices are being shut down through gerrymandering, voter suppression, etc. And remember, he, Biden was like, oh, filibuster, there's nothing I could do, right? Mm -hmm. But when the stock market was in danger, all of a sudden they froze the filibuster, got rid of it temporarily to say that they could raise the debt ceiling. Yep. So there was definitely something they could do. They just chose not to do it when it came to voting rights for African Americans and others. And or the it, George Floyd Policing Act. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, I, all I'm saying is that Yes, neo-fascism, I mean, we talk about this all the time. Neo-fascism kills quick. Neoliberalism gives us a little more time to try to mm -hmm. beat it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we got, we got to push back against neo-fascism, but let's not be under any illusion in this country that the power of green dominates. And you have people, whether it's Trump or Biden or other powerful people who have, over the course of their lives and their careers, he didn't have to side with those people, Jink, as a younger man. He could have been on the freedom fighting side, but he was not. Yeah. And so that is in his nature as well. And what I'm saying to our neoliberal sisters and brothers and family and friends, yes, it is right to call out wrong on the Republican side, but you need to call out wrong on the Democratic side and vice versa. Yeah. By the way, also the, to our uh, brothers and sisters in the news business, yes. you're not supposed to be just on one side or the other side, you're supposed to Truthfully, honestly report the news. That's right. So, for example, on the neo fascist killing us quicker, you should also take that into account. So, you could hear Biden's terrible record doesn't mean you vote against Biden. It depends that's right. on what the situation is. Well, who's he running against? If he's running against Bernie Sanders, that's one thing. If he's running against Donald Trump, that's another thing, right? And so then, and I'm, I, like, if you give me a choice between a neoliberal and a neo fascist, I'm gonna vote for a neoliberal. 
okay? And why am I gonna do that? Because because I'm gonna have more time to mm-hmm. catch the neoliberal, okay? Mm-hmm. Right. And younger voters are very, very progressive, so we're gonna catch those sons of bitches, okay? But the neo-fascist ends democracy and we're done, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So that those distinctions are very sure. important. And also, I think, look, you're talking about the, the media's role in this. I think the media is more ready to, pr- to criticize someone like Trump, but I think that they're more comfortable doing that because they know that if they take out Trump, they might get a DeSantis. But that's who's recent, gonna give them the same. John, that's recent. They uh, gave no, I know, but what I'm saying is that media. they are not gonna take down Biden because if they take down Biden, they might get a Bernie. I'm saying they're playing their role yeah. in trimming a little bit of the rhetorical excess from the neo fascists, knowing that they're gonna get a different Republican who's gonna pass the same exact sort of economic policies. Point so, well taken. Yeah, and I'll say one last thing. Look, Kinzinger gave an unvarnished speech, so I give him credit. It was a raw, powerful speech telling the truth about the current state of the Republican Party. But for others, and funny enough, most of mainstream media, they're actually to the right of Adam Kinzinger in this case. Why? Because look, as we just explained to you with the Southern strategy, the Republicans had taken the hood from the Democrats and started wearing it, okay? So they had become the racist party. What Trump did was, he's like, you know what, I don't think we need the hood. And he took the hood off, okay? Blue suit. Yeah, so that was the- sheets. Yeah, so that was the difference between the Republican Party since uh, Civil Rights Act and the Republican Party since Donald Trump. One hid their racism, the other one didn't bother hiding their racism. And what the mainstream press is doing in Basically, giving DeSantis a free ride, who has the same exact policies as Trump, Excellent. is saying we prefer it with the hoods on. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.